Today, I have a mortgage agent as a guest who has 20 plus years experience to answer some of the most common questions that I've been asked in recent times like, you know, how long the interest rates going to continue to increase? When they're going to come down? Is it is still a good time to take variable mortgage or fixed mortgage? Should I buy under a corporation or a personal name? Should I buy now or wait? Should I refinance now or wait? Should I go for a HELOC or cash out refinance? All these questions. So stay till the end. I'm sure you're going to get a lot of information. Any of the questions you have didn't get answered, let me know in the comments below. Namaskar. Welcome back to my channel. This is Aditya Soma. Again, another great episode regarding how you can achieve financial freedom using real estate vehicle. So today I'm here with a special guest, Rasha, who is crushing it in the mortgage industry from 20 plus years. So I'm really <laughs> excited for this interview because, you know, I have so many questions. So much the real estate is completely now revolving around this interest rates. So. Welcome, Rasha. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So for people who don't know you, who are you? Who am I? Yeah. <laughs> um, so my name is Rasha Ingrata. I've been with Mortgage Intelligence since 1999. Wow. And um, I actually got into the business by accident. Not by the car accident. Or no, something. not by accident. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. So you, you're more focused in Windsor, Essex or uh, you work everywhere? Um, pretty much. Like I love working local and mm -hmm. I love doing mortgages locally. Yeah. I have had clients that I've moved out of the city, like they've gone to Toronto, London, Kitchener, Alberta. And if they do go outside of Windsor, I still try and help them. Yeah. Um, and then if I know I can't help them, I refer them to a broker that I know and I can trust that can help them. Yeah, oh, that sounds fantastic. You yeah. know, uh, fun fact is I got my mortgage license three and a half, four years ago before yeah. I became an agent. I, but I, I said remember. like after two applications, I think <laughs> this is not for me. <laughs> you need a specific personality to Thank do the you. mortgage. You have a great personality too. No, I mean specific personality for the mortgages. For the mortgage. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. so I love the sales. Both of them are sales, but for me, I don't like to sit in front of computer papers, see documents, you know, a lot of things, uh, numbers, crunching the numbers all day long. Yeah. I love the numbers, but only for the properties, <laughs> not the mortgage <laughs> And side. you do a great job there. Thank you. Yes, you do. So today I got like so many questions that mm -hmm. many investors have been asking me okay. and also some of the questions I have. So I'll start with the biggest question so people can get out of that wave. So okay. is it still a good time for investors to invest in real estate because of these interest rates? Um, so when it comes to Windsor mm -hmm. and surrounding area, because don't forget, you know, a, a lot of p investors that want to invest here sometimes think about Windsor, mm -hmm. but we've got beautiful areas to invest outside of Windsor, mm -hmm. like Kingsville and Leamington, Bell River, South Amherstburg. So those are all beautiful areas that you can invest in. Yep. And we are still one of the best places to invest your money mm -hmm. and build wealth and real estate. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, I want to get the confirmation on that because I personally heavily invest in Windsor. But how does the interest rates, you know, impacting? Impact that? Yeah, because, you know, right now, that's why like many people are holding off because the mm -hmm. interest rates skyrocketed. Yeah, so it is a little bit of a scary time right now mm -hmm. because our interest rates went from you know we actually had interest rates in the ones last year like yeah. 1.69 1.59 yep. and then they quick, uh, quickly creeped up to early this year and now we're in the fours and we have some interest rates in the fives fives yeah so you know with that big jump right there uh, people have slowed down a little bit and looking at homes um, but I do find a lot of the old pre-approvals are coming back because the prices have come down a little mm. bit and the market is slowed down a bit, yeah. um, people that, you know, the clientele in the category of, let's say, wanting to buy a house in the in the 500 range, now they can do that. Yeah, before if, they if could, that makes yeah, sense, yeah, yeah, that's right? true. Yeah, because, you know, before to find a nice home under 500 is was challenging. Yeah, like mm. I saw an offer to purchase just before I came here today, mm -hmm. um, 499 and I quickly went to the MLS mm -hmm. to look at to the see property. How the pro yeah. and I'm like, like, oh my gosh, this is a really nice home. Yeah. How did he get it for four ninety nine? But like, you know what? It's great. That, yeah, that the same property would have been like eight hundred, seven fifty, seven fifty, or yeah. something like that. Yeah. That's insane, right? Like, even though the rate went up, but now they're getting two hundred and fifty thousand less. Correct. But you know, um, very strong fear in the market is like 
is this rates can go up can mm -hmm. they still continue to climb up okay and how long so here's my prediction because mm -hmm. i did a tiktok video not too long ago and somebody asked me if i'm a mortgage specialist mm -hmm. or an economist and i said no it says <laughs> it right there in my title that i'm I am a mortgage <laughs> specialist yeah so but warning <laughs> warning we are not financial advisor i'm Randa. not an economist <laughs> but to answer that question mm -hmm. uh, because i've been there for like 23 years and i've seen the rates go up and down mm -hmm. right so the bank of canada when they um increase interest rates it's because there's inflation and they're mm -hmm. trying to slow down the economy yeah. right you know um lower inf inflation when they uh, do that which mm -hmm. they are doing a good job of that right now yeah. inflation rates are going to come back down and we might hit a little bit of a recession mm. and if that happens okay they're going to now lower interest rates Again, Bank Bank of Canada. Yeah. They're going to lower interest rates to boost consumer confidence. Yeah. And if you remember, during the pandemic mm -hmm. in March of 2020, yeah. what did the Bank of Canada do? They reduced the rates. They reduced the rates because everybody was panicking. They're not spending money. They're not spending money. Yeah. If they're not spending, the economy cannot sustain. Can crash. Yeah. And they were worried about that. I love that uh, analogy because you know I think in reality that's what happened in the past too, right? Like COVID. But before that, like, have you seen? Another crashes before yes. that's like similar kind of. So the crash that happened in 2008. Yeah. Right. So that happened, and then slowly afterwards, rates came down because again they wanted to boost consumer confidence. Yep. And the Bank of Canada, um, they're just trying to do that to help the consumer. And I think by 2023, to answer mm -hmm, your mm -hmm. question, by 2023, I think that rates are going to come back down. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm not an economist. Yep. And I would pay a million dollars for a crystal ball you know <laughs> but because of what I've seen in the past it only re repeats I think in the same way because you know now they're increasing crazily because everyone is spending money and they're worried because that money people are spending is not the real money they're spending from their home equity line of credits they're spending on things that they're not supposed to so yeah no I, I agree on that and you know that brings me up to another question because you know the rates are going up and they can for until 2023 and then you know until this the Bank of Canada stops it but but do you recommend people going for a fixed rate or variable? Yeah. So I talk about a lot about that, that in my videos as well. Um, I think uh, to go with a variable rate mortgage, mm -hmm. okay? Because then this way, you and I both know, the average consumer does not know this. Yep. If you lock yourself into a fixed rate mortgage, it's not easy getting out of a fixed rate mortgage. Penalties yep. can be huge. Heavy. Especially if you lock in yourself to like, let's say four, five, nine right yep. now, and rates go down to two, eight, nine or 3.29, you're gonna pay a hefty penalty to get out of that mortgage. Yep. Where if you did a variable rate mortgage, mm -hmm. the penalties are minimal, yep. and then you could lock in at any time without penalties, yeah. depending on how your contract reads. True, but generally the variables are just three months interest only. Three months interest penalty. So like if you're an investor, that that's why like personally, I go with all Me variable, too. like never fixed. On this house, I, without knowingly, I have a fixed rate because the banks, they didn't tell me when they're doing it. And I was new at that time, I didn't know anything, but I realized I tried to refinance a couple of times. They said the penalty is like 10,000, 12,000 for 280,000 mortgage, heavy. Whereas it was variable, I would have got out and for a better rate, my monthly payment would have gone down. Yeah. So it's it's very interesting, especially now you're buying it for a good price, but the interest rate is higher because your monthly payment is now your monthly payment is higher. Yeah. But if you put a variable, yes, you're still getting lower than the fixed rate, right? You're the getting lower than the prime rate. So prime is at 4.7 right now. Mm -hmm. It just increased by 1%. Mm -hmm. And um, you can get a really good discount on prime. Mm. So even with the discount on prime, you're still paying less than a fixed rate mortgage. Yeah. I mean, that's a whole different topic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. It, it, yeah, we can talk for but, 15 minutes. <laughs> but if I, if you do the math and if you actually look at statistics for the past 10 years, mm -hmm. it's actually been better to go with a variable, even when rates were very low. Yeah, love it. So now that brings me to another question. Like a lot of homeowners acquired a lot of equity all these years. Yes. Now, is it a wise decision to refinance now or wait for a few months because they want to invest into another rental property? Is it a good time to refinance? Yeah. 
You know what? In our industry, people ask us for our opinions all the time, and I always use the word crystal ball all the time because, you know, if you were to ask me in January where mm -hmm. rates would be today, and I said to you they would be in the fives, you'd probably laugh at me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they were at two. Because they were in the twos, yeah. right? So we don't know what's going to happen, mm -hmm. but we can only go by what history has shown us, yep. right? And that's what economists do, yep. right? Um, so to answer your question is if you are going to borrow money against your home to invest your money, mm -hmm. that's never a bad idea. If you are going to borrow money to go spend it at the casino, that's a horrible idea, <laughs> yeah. you know? But you're you're investing your money into another asset. You're building wealth. Yeah. Okay? So you're making your money work for you. Yep. Yeah. Um, interest rates are actually still better. You still can uh, make more money investing your money than leaving it in the home equity yeah. or in your bank. Yeah, so true. I'm the big believer in that. But I just want to hear from experts what they say because I, you know, I'm still baby in this game. I just want to learn. Um, you know, that brings me to this question. Uh, I, I, I would love to refinance, but you know, for primary homes, we have this um, option of going for HELOC, yeah, or yeah. I can do a cash refi. What's yes. your take on that? Which one would should I do? Because, you know, for yep. example, this house, I have equity. Do you suggest me going for HELOC or cash out? So if I looked at your application and I saw that there was a huge penalty, mm -hmm. I would do a HELOC. Got it. Okay, I would do a HELOC and then I would wait for your mortgage to come up for renewal mm -hmm. and then tie the two. Got it. Okay, this way you're not paying a huge penalty. Yep. Um, this is all tax stuff and accounting mm -hmm. stuff. One yep, day yep. you might want to record this with an accountant. Anything you do for purposes of investing money mm -hmm. is a write-off. Yep. So when you refinance your mortgage and you did pay that $10,000, mm -hmm. hopefully you know accountants agree with me yep. on that because I do it all the time. Um, there's a tax write-off because yep. you're, you're, it's costing you money to yep. invest that money. Yeah, that's an investment you're using. It's an using. investment, It's right? not a per your personal home mortgage. Well, it is a personal, you're refinancing your home no market. but like the amount you're taking out you're yes. using for you're the using investment for, for so the interest on that particular amount you can exactly but if i don't have the fixed rate let's say if i have a variable oh then that's just the three month interest penalty god now the recent concern i i read an article somewhere they're talking about like you know helocs they're gonna put some kind of limitations where i cannot access majority of my funds like it's gonna be like 65 percent yeah yeah so like how does that gonna impact my refi so it'll just you're you're not gonna borrow as much as you can right now so that's mm. another thing too if you are looking to invest your money i would do it now take it out now even mm. set up your refi your home equity line of credit right now mm -hmm. so in, in hopes that in the future that they don't that'll be grandfathered got it so they're not going to take that money away from I, me I, again i don't know yeah, but they generally can, they can change rules all the yeah. time but i i can't see that happening if you've already got got it in place yeah. if that because means, if, if, if that they're going to ask money now a lot of people will be in trouble yeah <laughs> right if they've already yeah. borrowed it love that so far you know i'm learning a lot <laughs> uh, hope you guys too you know if you are make sure hit that thumbs up button you know uh, or else this video won't be you know popping up to other people who might get benefit out of it share it with your friends another question that i ha i get very often i'm an investor i'm looking to buy my next property or third property or mm -hmm. fourth property is it advisable to buy it on personal or corporation what are the benefits very you know? good question so when you're buying an investment property it is advisable to put it in a hold co company mm -hmm. because in the future immediately it, it might not have very big tax implications because mm -hmm. you're you know you have revenue coming from that property and then you have expenses so you're good but when you go to sell that property in the mm -hmm. future your taxes on that capital gains will be more than than it would be if, if it wasn't a whole company yeah. this is a question you want to talk to your accountant about yeah. when you get into three or four properties but it is advisable yeah. to do whole. of course you know we are not tax accountants or professional adv <laughs> financial advisors so of course seek the professionals don't just take our advices we are random people on social media just a warning there <laughs> but you know the concern i heard is like you know i love hold coast like most of my properties are on hold co um you know some people are afraid that they cannot get mortgages yes 
yeah. on the res- mm-hmm. residential side if I am buying a so what is the solution yeah. there so banks have two departments when they lend out mortgages mm-hmm. they actually more than two but you've got your residential mortgages yep. and you've got your commercial and then you've got the residential for hold co yeah so they all have different rules okay yep. so under residential usually banks don't like to lend more than four or five properties yep. then you go to them to the hold co category mm-hmm. you can do like like eight, nine, ten wow. properties, right? Mm-hmm. Some lenders don't have a limit. Got it. Okay. I have clients that have more than ten or twelve properties, and now we're doing mortgages with not private lenders. Yeah. They're they're called B lenders. B, yep. But a lot of times, people when they hear a word B, they think it's like it's going to be heavy to interest rate. Yeah, and it's not. It's not. Yeah. It's not. I always say, if you're going to make money, who cares if you're going to pay one percent higher than a bank? So you just need to make sure the numbers are working. Cash the flow. number cash flow is so important. Yeah. You got to make sure your cash flow is going to work before you you got to do your homework yeah. and your numbers and your calculations you kind of answered one of the other question i wanted to ask like you know how many properties can i buy you know if i because a lot of people have a notion that banks will stop saying no after five properties or six properties can mm-hmm. i but you just mentioned like your some of your clients own 10 20 properties yeah. so is that possible to buy unlimited number of properties it is it gets creative mm-hmm. like it depends on what lenders you're dealing with mm-hmm. Um, you know, I have a lender, I have a client that has private mortgages, but you know what? It, it's okay to have private mortgages mm-hmm. if you're making your money on, on the other end. Again, this is like a, a big topic to talk yeah. about, like all by itself. But in but... short, it's possible. Oh, yes. You just need to have a creative person like Rasha who, <laughs> who has different lenders, I believe, right? Like, you know, you're a broker yeah. who have access to different lenders, not just like one strict bank. So this is where you need to be in touch with a professional. This is what, you know, I've been doing for all my career and I have seen like a lot of people who are successfully doing they have a good person like solid knowledgeable person who has access to different lenders and with that you know uh, I know we can talk a lot on and on just one final advice that would you give for you know first time home buyers or investors who are concerned in this market like you know mm. lost yeah. what would you advise you know what I have to say that 50 50 of my clients I've got lots of first time home buyers second time mm-hmm. home buyers and then I've got investors mm-hmm. because I'm an investor my Myself. Mm-hmm. So I like to work with both. You know, I like to work with both because I've been a first-time home buyer and I I know how hard and difficult it yep. is. So my advice is, you know what? Talk to professionals. It is so important that you don't just seek advice from one person and then because you got the wrong answer, you you shut it down. Yeah. Okay. I have so many people that call me and they say, well, I didn't know I could do that. I didn't know I could do this. I didn't know I could do that. Probably because they didn't get the 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 right advice, yeah. The right advice. Honestly, that's a great advice because personally, like I bought my first property at that time, I was on work permit, mm-hmm, and I yeah. just got my job like six months ago. Mm-hmm. Many many agents, many banks said no, and I keep talking to different people, even though they said no. Okay, I've talked to another one. Finally, I found the mortgage person who has access to this B lender, who said yes. So love that advice, guys. And I know you, you know, where people can find you, of course. Where they can find me? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, we have our website. It's called shopmortgages.ca. But if you um, want cool tips like this on, on TikTok, got, we have some cool I've TikTok, TikTok videos. TikTok. We just started TikTok and I can't believe how crazy. Yeah. That. We have one video that's got over 200,000 views. Yeah, because you got to... <laughs> <laughs> good advice you know that's what I suggest like if you guys want some okay. solid advice on the mortgages go follow on the TikTok and Instagram of course I'll put all the yeah, links in yeah. the description so check out those Rasha thank you so much it's thank a pleasure much for, for having, having me this was lots yeah. of fun <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so hope you guys had enjoyed this video as well you know and you got some advice and knowledge from here if you did make sure to hit that thumbs up button and hit the subscribe button and the bell notification and see you in the next video